Praise the Lord and good afternoon. Again, it's Wednesday, and this is the word from God from the bishop's desk. I pray that you all are well. I pray that you all are found in good health. Um, it's good to be here again, able to share the word of God with you to encourage you through this week. I pray that the word of God on last week was a blessing to you. Some reached out to me and let me know that the word was just for them. And so if one person is blessed, then the word of God has accomplished what it was set out to accomplish. But I know that there's many more that could use the word and be blessed of the word. So I encourage you to share this word with others and your friends and, and promote uh, the bishop's desk and promote and get people to subscribe to the channel so that the word of God can can reach them as well. So. I'm not going to waste too much time. We we have the latter part of Psalms 1 to complete. So this probably won't be a long, this may be a shorter version, but I'm quite sure that whatever God has to say, that it will be a blessing to you in the latter part of these scriptures. And so just as a recap on last week, uh, we began in Psalms 1. And we talked about the man of God and the woman of God. And the uh, verse one started off talking about blessed. And we, we found out what blessed is. Blessed, <clears throat> again, I'll go back and just... just refresh your mind on blessed because we talked about how people you ask them how they're doing they say i'm blessed i'm highly favored and that's a very uh popular slogan that people use but we found out the word blessed is to be made holy consecrated and so when you say you are blessed you're saying that you've been made holy by god you're saying that you've been blessed by God and that you've been consecrated, you know. So the next time that you you say that you are blessed, make sure that you're speaking correctly and that you're walking in a holy state of life and that you uh, have been consecrated, and you, which, which means your mind, your thought process uh, is pure, is holy. Doesn't mean that you won't think about uh, things at times, but you won't ponder on them too long. You will get those things right before God. So to be blessed, made holy and consecrated is the man that walketh not in the council. And we talked about the council being taking uh, advice from uh, ungodly people, regardless of who they may be. And uh, walk of not in the council, and that this is not a physical walk, but this is just seeking out um, people that are ungodly and and finding people having a problem, picking a phone up and calling your 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 center cousin or your center homeboy or your center girlfriend and discussing matters of a blessed person. So you say you are uh, with the ungodly. Uh, nor standeth in the way of sinners, just being in the congregation of sinners, you know, they, they're living their life and you're there um, claiming to be blessed, consecrated and holy, um, making them uncomfortable because you shouldn't be there. They know you shouldn't be there. You know you shouldn't be there, but you're there anyway because your mind and your flesh, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, having a mouth uh, hard on people speaking down and 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 speaking against people um, having a rash mouth the bible said that we shouldn't sit in that seat basically of judgment um, judging people and then he went on to say but his delight is in the law of the lord we should be delighting ourselves in the law of the lord what is the law of the lord the word of god from genesis to revelation um uh, I always tell people, um, you read, 
Genesis to Malachi to find out the his the history of 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 your heritage, where you come from, um, God, the creation, the beginning, uh, how the world evolved, how we got here today, the reason why our lives are in the state that they're that they're in today. You you read that from Genesis to Malachi, but then when you go from Acts to Revelation is where you really, well, well, the church began in Acts, but you begin to see how the church began, the problems in the church, and to Revelation, um, the books there, there, there you find how to live today in this life that we live in now. And so the Bible, so this is where we are to delight ourselves in the word of God. Um, which is the law of the Lord. And in his law do if he meditate day and night, which means we should constantly be in the word of God, um, meditating on it. It should be, you should always be meditating. You know, I, on the outside, you know, people should know that in your heart, you're meditating on the Lord. You should always at some point in your mind be thinking on the things of God um, and just meditating on it day and night. Because it, and by you meditating on the law of the Lord day and night, it keeps you prepared. So when when opposition come, you are you are ready to to challenge it. You are you are ready to stand up and 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 fight against the principalities, the wickedness that's in high and dark places. You're prepared. You're not caught off guard, so to speak. Um, and he shall and and then so we pick up here in verse three. And so uh, the, the, the writer here, um, says, um, I'm not going to go back and, and, and find that, but I forgot who the writer here was in Psalms one, but we know that, um, it wasn't David. And we, we cleared that up, that a lot of the Psalms was ascribed to David, um, and we know that there were some, oh, I know what it was. In Psalms 1, the, the writer was not identified um, in Psalms 1. But we find here in verse 3, he writes and he says, and he, talking about the blessed man, shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. And if you have a good study Bible, the tree, the tree, let's go to Psalms 52 and eight. It's talking about a tree said that the blessed man should be like a tree that planted by the rivers of waters. And then the Bible sends me to Psalms 52 and eight. And turn your Bibles to Psalms 52 and 8. And it says, but I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. He identified himself as, as a green olive tree in the house of God, which means that he's, he's prosperous because he he's identifying himself as being in the house of God. That's the most important. He said, I am like a green olive tree. But the most important part of this, this part of the scripture says, in the house of God. That's the most important part, that he's in the house of God, which means he's in God's presence. And physically, to be in the house of God, you know, we're always talking about coming to the church, but being in the house of God, um, is being in the word of God. It takes you back to meditating on the word, the law, day and night. That will keep you in the spiritual house of God because there right now is no physical place that we can go. And of course, we come to church on Sundays and weekdays and we congregate here and we exalt the name of Jesus. But this is just the physical place where we come and gather to worship. But to be in the house of God, to actually be in God's presence, to be in his house spiritually, you must meditate on him 
day and night and delight yourself in the law of the Lord. That will keep you in the house of God. And this is the writer here says that he is like a olive tree in the house of God. And, and, and he's not only in there, but he trusts in the mercy of God forever and ever. So he trusts that God is going to always deliver because in God's mercy is deliverance. And that's, that's the most important thing that in this life we're seeking for is to be delivered, to be delivered from what? From the, the, the sin of our flesh. That's what we're striving to be delivered from, to be able to be in control of our flesh. Most importantly, we as being blessed, consecrated, made holy, we should be in control of our flesh. We shouldn't be people that's out of control. Every little thing gets us um, knocked off point and we have to keep going back and asking God to forgive us and forgive us. We should be in control because why? Because we've already prepared ourselves because we were meditating. If you're finding yourself being out of control, if you're finding yourself where people can get you to act out and, and, and act unseemly and ungodly, that's because you're not meditating on the word of God day and night as the word of God. In Psalms 1, the psalmist told us, he told us to meditate on on the law of the Lord day and night, and we are to delight ourselves. When you delight yourself in the law of the Lord, as soon as, as things come, you will immediately trigger, the spirit will trigger your mind um, to deal with this in a spiritual way and not to fly off the handle and, and to become unseemly and ungodly. That's because you're constantly meditating on God. And he said that, that God's mercy, he trusts in God's mercy to deliver him from those situations and those circumstances that come from the people that are close to you, the people you love the most. A stranger cannot get to you and really hurt you. You will remove yourself from a stranger quickly, but those who you love the most are the ones who get to you and they, they wound you and they hurt you. But if you meditate and delight yourself as the Bible say we are to, then you can always trust in the mercies of God. Verse nine, he says, I will praise thee forever, forever. I will continuously praise the Lord forever. Why? Because of the great things that he has prepared for me because of the the, the blessings that come with me uh, uh, being in his house. So I'm going to praise him because it's a privilege. It's an honor to be able to speak and to say that you are going to remain in the house of God, to take ownership of God's house, his, his presence, to be able to speak it and say, this is where I'm going to stay because I've been given access. I've been given the liberty um, to stay here because I'm blessed. I can stay here. That's a privilege. That's not given to everybody. So because I've been granted that privilege, I'm going to praise him forever because thou has done it because the Lord had did it. The Lord has made this way unto you. There is nobody else that have made this way unto you, but the Lord has done this and I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. So he said he's going to wait on the Lord because he understands that, that God has done this for him. God has made these provisions for him. God has allowed him to be able to be in his presence, in his midst, to be able to reap the benefits of God's mercy. So he said, I'm going to praise God forever. And he gave God the credit, the Lord done this. Okay. And, and so that's being a tree, like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And, and, and as it, as it's planted by the rivers of water, it's, it's, it's not going to just be there, right? The tree is not, it's, it, the tree is going to, 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 um, bring forth some benefits. Okay. So the tree that's planted by the rivers of water, the tree that's in the house of God, that, that's like an olive tree in the house of God, it's going to bear benefits, benefits that you can use right now in this life. 
Uh, you don't have to wait till you die to reap the benefits of God. So he said that it's going to bring it forth his fruit in his season. What do he mean here? The fruit. What fruit are we talking about? And it's going to come in its season. The seasons of life that that is what it is what the brother's talking about right here. Uh, life bring different seasons. Um, sometimes there's a season of prosperity. Some that some, sometimes there's a season of pain. Sometimes there's a season of joy. Sometimes there's a season to cry. You know, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes talks very well about the seasons. And so these are the seasons of life that we deal with. And so the writer here is saying that I'm going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and I'm going to bring forth the necessary, the appropriate fruit in its season. So whatever season I'm found in, in my life, I'm going to bring forth the, the fruit that's going to allow me to be able to endure the fruit that's going to allow me to be able to remain in the mercies of God. So uh, Peter, Peter said, let's turn your Bibles to Second Peter, Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter one. Let's look what Peter said about, about, about the fruits. Second Peter, chapter one, give you a second to get there. Because remember, the, the, the writer here, he says, while you're turning to second Peter, he says he's like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And he gave God the credit in, in 52 that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Seasons, the season of life. OK. And then Peter says here in chapter one, he said, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, Christ, and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power, talking about the season now, okay, the, the characteristics um, we're going through seasons of life. You you need to bring forth a fruit when you get into certain seasons of your life. Give it unto us all things that pertain unto life, okay? And godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue, okay? Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promise that by these here. Here is the fruit. Ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We've been able to bear these fruits because we have escaped. Why? Because back in 52, God did it for us. He made it, he made it able for us to be able to remain in his house and in his mercies. He allowed us to be like an olive tree planted by the rivers of water that is able to bring forth its fruit in its season, okay? And beside this, give me all diligence, add to our faith. Faith is the first one. Faith is a fruit. Sometimes when you're going through life and you have challenges in life, you need your faith to kick in to believe that God is going to work it out for you. To add to your faith virtue, virtue, this virtue is power to your faith, power to believe, to have a strong faith, because sometimes your faith will waver uh, because sometimes life will throw uh curveballs and situations at you constantly. And so you need your faith to be strong here. And then he said to your virtue, knowledge, the knowledge, what, what knowledge? These are the characteristics uh, 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 that the, the Psalm is talking about in it, the seasons, knowledge, knowledge, adding knowledge to your faith, being able to apply what you believe, what you don't see, but you believe being able to apply the word of God. The word of God is the knowledge that is talking about. These are the characteristics that, that we have gained uh, being like an olive tree planted in the, in the house of God. And, and because these are the, 
the mercies that these are the characteristics that that come out of God's mercies and and temperance and 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 to your temperance patience you know having self control sometimes when you're going through self control being able to remain solid and not say anything and allow God to work it out for you is more important than anything and patience is is great because we have to wait on God. We have to learn to wait on God. It goes back to the beginning of verse one. Blessed is the man what who not sitting in the seat of the in the council of the ungodly, right? Or taking advice from the ungodly, or standing in the way of sinners, being waiting on God. You know because. Going back to, again, as I said, asking the ungodly and taking counsel from them, but being patient, waiting on God. This is what comes out of being like a tree planted in the house of God. You will gain these attributes because the mercies of God will give these attributes to you. These are in the mercies of God. As God mercy comes upon your life, it's just not there to allow you to get through. God's mercy will, will come and make a way for you and at the same time will apply what you need so you can be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth its fruit, whatever season that your life is in. Being uh, godliness, just that's just the, the way you ought to be godly at all times, regardless of what season. We should always be godly. Godly. What is godly? God-like. Okay? What will God do? This takes us back. Godly takes us back to meditating on the word day and night. Brotherly kindness. Being kind to one another. Charity. What is charity? Love. So these are the characteristics and the attributes that, that's going to come out of us being like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And these are the fruits that we're going to bring forth in our seasons, the, the seasons, again, the, the different situations that approach us in our life. And it says his leaf also, I'm sorry, back to um, Psalms one. Uh, he said his leaf also shall not wither. Again, let's go back to 53 and 31. Psalms 53 and 31. He said, his leaf shall also not wither. No, I'm sorry. Psalms 52 and 8. He said, his leaf also shall not wither. That's forever. So he said here in Psalm 52, I will praise thee forever. Because thou has done it, and I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. I will praise thee forever. His his leaf will never wither. Why? Because he's going to wait on God forever. However long it take, I'm going to wait on God. I'm going to wait on the salvation of God. Whatever God say he's going to do, I'm going to wait on him to do it. We have to learn to wait on God. Again, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him because sometimes the way you think things should be should not be that way. Sometimes the way you think things should go, they should not go that way. But if you wait on God, lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge God. If you're not sure, ask God. See, a lot of us, we will not ask God. We think that serving God is complicated and we think that serving God is just for the priests and the preachers. No, serving God is for everyone. Serving God is just like a normal relationship. When you're in a normal relationship, you ask questions when you don't ask. We, But we want to ask everybody else who don't have a relationship with God. We want to talk to people about our most sacred parts of our life and, and our heart with people rather than talking to God. Because we don't see God, we don't feel like we can talk to God. But I tell you, God is very much present if you talk to him. God is very much present if you sit down and read the word of God. See, to hear back from God, you have to let God speak back to you and remain silent while you read 
You can't just talk to God and have this one-sided relationship and think that everything is going to be all right. That's an unhealthy relationship. You have to sit down and you have to let God speak back to you. And you have to get in the word of God and you have to meditate on it day and night. You have to get some scriptures and you have to ponder on them scriptures. You have to have them scriptures in your heart all day long. You got to think on them scriptures and God will speak to you out of the word of God. He will speak to you out of those scriptures. And then you will begin to see a, a, a relationship or a communication develop between you and God. That's how it works. It's that simple. You don't need to go to every time to a man or a woman and ask them what God said about you. God will tell you exactly what he wants to say to you right out of the word of God. The preachers are sent to confirm what God has said to you in the event you, you don't understand it. That's what the preacher's for. The preacher is not sent to tell you what God said all the time, some of the time, but you should find out what God has to say to you directly for yourself. The preacher will come and again, confirm what God said to you. But he said that his leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatever we do in this life, it shall prosper. Because if God is for us, he's more than the world against us. When God is for you, you will prosper. Now, prosper is not talking about in the physical sense, uh, because a lot of times people want to attach prosperity and prosper to God the wrong way. Thank you, Holy Ghost, because as I'm looking up prosper, he's sending me right back. He's sending me right back to he's connecting me right back to um, first Peter, because in God. You don't attach, you don't, you don't attach uh, um, these physical things to God, but to prosper is to, is to um, gain spiritually in God. The uh, prosper says we succeed in material terms, be financially successful, make successful. This is talking prospering in the physical. We know that God, he works through people in the physical, but God is very much spiritual. So I want to go back to Peter and see where you prosper. Because if you can prosper in these areas, if you can succeed in these areas, if you can make successful in these areas, then you will be able to overcome. You'll be able to remain in the house of God because look, that's the point that we remain in the house of God. Why? Because in the house of God is where his mercies are. We need his mercies, right? The writer said that he was like a tree planted by the rivers of water, right? And so we went to Psalms 52 and eight and he said that he would, was like an olive tree in the house of God. In the house of God was the most important part. And in the house of God was God's mercies. And so more than anything in this life, we want God to extend his mercies in our life, right? But we want to be successful. Successful in what? We should prosper in everything that we do. And in order for us to prosper in everything that we do, we must have what? The, the characteristics in order to prosper. You can't prosper um, even financially. You can't prosper unless you have a, a, su a supply for the demand. Once you're able to supply the demand, then you can prosper. It's the same thing spiritually. You must have the supply because your, your flesh is going to demand certain things and you must be able to what? Supply faith, 
You must be able to supply virtue. You must be able to supply knowledge. You must be able to supply temperance. You must be able to supply patience. You must be able to supply godliness. You must be able to supply uh, brotherly kindness, and you must be able to supply charity, which is love. You must be able to supply, and when you can supply these things to your flesh, then you're going to prosper in your life. Everything that you do in your life, you're going to prosper. Whatever season you're found in in your life, you will prosper if you have been successful in obtaining these gifts here from God. These, this divine nature that God says that we should have as people of God. He said it through Peter. Peter went on in verse 11. He said, we know this. And I love this where he said, wherefore, I will not be negligent to, in verse 12 and 1. He said, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it's me as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, reminding you that to prosper in God and to continue to reap God's mercy, you must abound and be prosperous in these characteristics. So I encourage you to go to 1 Peter chapter 1 and find in, in verse 4 through 8, and see what God say we should prosper in. And if we prosper in these things, prosper, become, become successful, become be, to make successful. If we learn to succeed in those characteristics, I declare we will be able to prosper in whatsoever we do. But then the, the word of God takes a turn. It says in verse four, Drastic turn. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. You see here this word chaff. Chaff is like the 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 the, the residue of a corn husk, the outside skin of seeds. And when the wind blow, after they fall off, they are just blown away. And that's the way the, 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 the world, the sinner man, the, the, the ungodly are. Their lives are just blown away. That's why you see so many people dying because their, li their lives are like the chaff and the wind blow off them away because they have, look, they have no peace. They, they, they have no peace, no place in God's house. They're not like the tree planted by the rivers of water that bring it forth fruit in its season. Because when, 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 when you go through certain seasons, as I said, in your life, you will apply certain gifts. But the ungodly, because they have none of these gifts, their lives are out of control. And when your life get out of control, it's like driving a car at 100 miles an hour with bad tires on it and it's raining outside, you know what's going to happen with that. As soon as you hit the brakes, you're going to lose control and you're going to lose your life. And so as the wind come, because their life does not have these attributes that you can only get being like a tree planted by the rivers of water in God's house and, and being in the, in the way of God's mercies, they're losing their life. That's the ungodly because they will not meditate on God day and night. Therefore, the ungodly shall stand. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Matthew 25, 31. Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory. This is talking about Jesus and Jesus is prophesying here. He's telling them. He's giving revelation here. And all the holy angels with him. This is talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Then 
shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. This is why, you know, it's, it's, it's through Jesus Christ because it didn't say through God's glory. God gave the glory to Jesus. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another. God's going to deal with the nations here. He's going to deal with every nation. He's going to deal with every nationality of people. He's going to deal with every color, every kind. They're going to be before Jesus. And he shall separate them one from another. He's going to begin to separate the good from the bad. As a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. The goats will come and get mixed in with the sheep. And the Lord, that's, that's, that's what the staff was for, was to keep them separated and to keep them together and to guide them. And so he says he's going to come. And he's going to separate the sheep from the goats. And, you know, Jesus came as a sheep. And so the sheep, as the, you'll see what, what he's going to do with the sheep and the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, just as God have placed him on his right hand. Christ is going to place us. We are the sheep on his right hand. But the goats on the left, he's going to put the goats on the left at after he separate them because he's about to deal with them both. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father. Again, look what he said here. Again, we go back to Psalms one, blessed. He said, come ye blessed of who? My father, you've been consecrated. You've been made holy by God. He said, listen, See, Christ here acknowledges that you you who say you are blessed, that God blessed you, that this gift was bestowed upon you, just like the writer said in Psalm 52, that he was going to remain in the house of God. Why? Because God did it. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. This is talking about feeding the flock, taking care of the poor, those who were in needy. Because see, the Lord, the Lord stands as the representative of, of those who are in need, those who are, 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 are without the Lord represent them because he said, if the, the, when you do this unto them, you do it, un, when you do it unto the least of them, you do it unto me. And so when you're doing things in the world for the, the hunger, them that thirst, uh, you gave them drink, uh, the, uh, when they were strangers, you took them in. When you do these things to people, you're really doing it to Christ. You're really doing these blessings unto Christ. And so Christ said, because you've done these things, come on in. He said, when I was naked, you clothed me. Now, you know, this couldn't have been talking about Jesus himself because he was the Messiah. Of course, he came and the Bible lets us know that there was no room in the end for him. But we know that God took care of him. This is talking about we showing action towards the people. Because when you've done these things, you've done these things unto Christ, even though you were doing them to the people that you saw in the world. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous. See, these are the things that we should do to people. See, the people in the world are who we are to practice on uh, uh, in representation of Jesus Christ. We ought to use people to, to, to practice on Jesus, so to speak. You want to, if it was Jesus who needed, you would give it to him. It would be no second guess. So when you see people in need, give it to him as if it was Jesus. Because Jesus said, when you do it to them, you're doing it unto me. 
answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink. In other words, we was obedient to what the word of God said we ought to do to those who were in need. When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee, we were obedient. Or when saw we the sick or in prison and came unto thee and the king shall answer and say unto them, this is the people of God, the blessed ones, the righteous. Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See that? You see that? You see that? He said, as when you were doing it unto them, you thought that you were doing this unto them, but you were really doing it unto me. I represent them. They represent me. Then shall he say also to them on the left hand, depart. This is the ungodly people. These are the people who shut up the bowels of compassion. These are the people that uh, are the rich young ruler who, who, who didn't want to get it, right? He said, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. People, listen, listen. You, you, you people who, who are so tight and you don't want to, you don't want to give to the hunger. You, 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 you want to worry about just you and yours. You don't want to give people those clothes that's in your closet that you can't fit no more. You don't want to go to the sick and see them. You scared to go into the prison and give those who are in prison a, a, a word from God. God is saying, listen, you depart from me. You know why? Because you're cursed. And, and I'm going to cast you into a fire because you you holding on to these things that are going to perish in life rather than holding on to God's unchanging hand. He said, you depart from me for you are of the devil and his angels. For when I was hungry, you you, you rode down the road and you said, I'm not going to get that, that, that bum my, my last dollar when when the dollar can't do you no good anyway. And you gave me no meat. You judging people again, going back, being scornful. This is why the Bible said in chapter one of Psalms, don't be scornful. Don't put your mouth on people when you don't know where they came from. You don't know how they got where they are today in their life. You just because you don't like the way it looked to your eyes, you judging them. You got your mouth on them. And because you put your mouth on them, it's causing you not to give because only the Lord can judge you, because when we give, then you're doing it unto the Lord. When you give, you're giving unto God. When you feed, you're feeding God. When you when you pray and you visit the sick, when you visit those in jail, you're doing it unto the Lord. So listen, don't be like the scornful because the scornful is going to have their place with the devil and his angels in hell because being scornful will cause you not to open up the bowels of compassion. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. When you know people are in need, you know people can use things. You know you have things that people need and you hold on to it because you paid for it. But let me tell you something. Remember, that which you was able to pay for, you would not have been able to pay for it if you was not like a tree planted by the rivers of water in the house of God. You would not be able to, to, to get the things that your, your finances say that you shouldn't have. But because of God's mercy that have extended in your life, you have things that you know that a poor person shouldn't have. But now you want to hold it up and you want to hold on to it because you worked so hard for it. But you better remember that God gave you the strength to get up and work. And there are some people who out here who have mental issues, who have mental blocks because people have done all manner evil, wicked things to them. Do you think a lot of people want to be in the state that they're in? Do you think people want to be out in the street eating out of trash cans? Do you think people want to stand on a corner and beg you for money? No, but things have happened in their life and God say, when you see them, don't be like the scornful. Give. Give. 
verse 43. I was a stranger and ye took me not in, naked and ye clothed me not, sick and in prison and ye visited me not. The goats, don't be a goat. Then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hunger or authoress or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee. Then shall he answer them saying, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it unto me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. I'm just saying. That's a lot in the word of God. We haven't even made it to verse six. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. This is the end of the wicked. I pray that the word of God has been a blessing to you. I pray that something has been said to move you. I pray that you would move to be like the tree planted by the rivers of water. I pray that, pray that you would desire to remain in the house of God forever. I pray that you would call yourself blessed and live as a blessed person and that you would meditate on the Lord day and night. I pray that you would not seek the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners. I pray that you will not sit in the seat of the scornful, but I pray that you would give to the hungered. I pray that you would visit the sick. I pray that you would visit those in prison. I pray that you would give those who are in need of shelter. I pray that if you have something to be a blessing to somebody, that you would open up your heart and that you would take on the attributes that Peter talked about in first Peter and that you would believe that Jesus Christ will continue to bless you and that you would take on the knowledge of God and that you would add to your knowledge temperance and patience and godliness and charity. And I pray that you would allow these things to operate in the season that you are in your life. I pray that the word of God blessed you. And if God should tarry, I'll see you all next week. God bless you.